Hey, what is going on everybody? And welcome to the College Info Geek Podcast, the internet's best resource for students looking to get ahead, but a terrible resource for learning how to pull off an Ocean's Eleven style heist of a casino. That's true. Though we could pivot into that if you want to. I, I have some thoughts about hacking the camera don't, systems. I don't wanna. About sneaking. Look, I've been rock climbing, so I think that if there was like a laser grid on the floor of a vault, I could sort of like shimmy my way across the walls and not get caught. I think that the, this is high risk. Uh, well, I'm not going to get any reward, reward because the risk is too high. I will almost certainly see no reward. Mm. Unless I like but what if? prison or getting my fingers cut off by mob bosses. Prison could be cool. The second one, maybe not so much. Well, it might be a combination. So Ooh, it could be a combination. Could it could be a, be a combination package of the deal. Two. <laughs> All right, I guess we'll continue to do work in order to make a living instead of stealing from casinos. Um, and yeah, I guess this podcast will continue to be a terrible resource for learning those things. But what we are going to talk about today is up in your fitness. I do like to up my fitness without going to a gym. Because I know you have particularly said on this podcast many times that you do not like going to gyms. I do not like going to gyms. Yeah. Nope. I don't like doing stuff around people, particularly mm. exercising and stuff. I just don't like to. And it then it like annoys people. me if somebody's using whatever machine I want. Or that like, does annoy me. Just like I don't want to. Also, it's a lot. I got to go to the gym. Yep. It's so far away. Anna and I were at the rock climbing gym on Tuesday. And... There was a specific route that I wanted to do, and I top rope climb, so usually I'm not on the route for very long. And there were these super pro rock climbers there who got there just slightly before us, and they were lead climbing a route that was in the same area, but it was really hard. And I think it was on the route for like 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, see if I had like a, okay, I'm gonna do this many pull-ups and whatever, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we're going to do it here. I fit it into my schedule finally, and then I get there, and then something like messes it up, yeah. or there's bad traffic, or just mm -hmm. anything. A lot of variables. We definitely have to deal with traffic getting to the climbing gym. That's like the one thing about it. It's not very close, and there really isn't a close climbing gym to where we live. We're like in a weird desert of climbing gyms, so we have to drive. There's a tall hotel about nearby. 20. That's true. The there it outside is. outside looks mainly glass, though. So unless I'm going to... To the could unskilled get those, climber. I could get those like Mission Impossible style suction cup things. And I could use those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure it's the same type of exercise anymore, actually. I'd have to think about that. What, like body-wise? Like you're not going to be gripping as many things if you're suction cupping, right? Yeah, if you attach the suction cups to your hands, like you strap yeah. them to your wrist or something, then your grip is irrelevant now. It's more just like... Yeah. Well, actually, if you suction cup yourself hard enough for the building... You could just hang there and then get caught by the police. So it's really like, do you have enough upper body strength to climb the entire building with the suction cups? No. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and not recommend this as one of the tips in this episode. Yeah. But what I want to talk about is like, f what do you do if, if you want to improve your fitness, but you hate going to the gym or you don't have a gym nearby or... Um, that may have been actually that that may may have been the only two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you hate going there, or you don't have one. Or That's your really your it. ex goes to the same gym as you, and you can't go back. That too. Yeah, your ex works at the gym. Your ex owns the gym. Uh oh. And she's really mean, so you yep. can't go back because she makes fun of you, because you can only bench two hundred and fifty pounds. That's probably the most common reason for this that, episode. Yeah, well, it's happened to a lot of people out there, and I feel for them. It's happened to me at least three times. I don't know why I keep dating female gym owners. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I think this is going to be useful because a lot of people, they're in dorms and apartments, don't have a whole lot of space, don't have, um, you know, a whole lot of tools to work with, uh, and also might not find going to the gym fun. Ooh, that was it. That was the third thing. Oh. What if you just, you want to get fit, but the idea of lifting weights or running on a treadmill sounds awfully boring. So I wanted to talk about some of the things that I've been doing. I kind of have this broken into three little subcategories. Uh, I want to talk about some body weight fitness stuff I've been getting into, um, building a home gym. And I think that you may have some home gym implements as well. I do. Everything I have is actually pretty cheap. 
and doesn't take up a whole lot of space. So when I say home gym, dear listener, don't don't picture like a giant power rack in the middle of your living room or like a treadmill because I don't have any of that. I have stuff that's small but useful. And then I want to talk about just like some sports I've tried because I want to. Okay. Wanna that's, wanna yeah. Sports are a good way to get fit to and it's sports. more fun. Yeah. Arguably. Uh, so let's talk about the like the simplest, easiest way that you could start to improve your fitness. And that is either doing like yoga or bodyweight fitness. And I think like people just don't, they kind of dismiss this because when they think of bodyweight fitness, they think of like maybe some pushups, maybe some pull-ups and bodyweight squats and that's about it. But there's like a lot more to it. Uh, and I was listening to an episode of the Tim Ferriss show and I think it's like called the secrets of gymnastic strength where he interviews um, Coach Summer, who is the founder of gymnasticbodies.com and is like an Olympic gymnast coach. And he had just all of this stuff about how you can start to improve your flexibility and your strength just doing bodyweight exercises, just doing things like dead arm hangs off a pull-up bar or, uh, or like planks or Superman things where you just like lay on your stomach and then try to raise your arms and your feet. Hmm. And this kind of sent me down a rabbit hole uh, because the episode also, it basically made me feel very bad about myself. Yeah. Yeah. So I like, I consider myself a pretty athletic person, but he was like, usually when I get clients, we start to see, you know, a few like key deficiencies, especially if they've been office workers. And one of the biggest ones is shoulder extension, which is where you like clasp your arms behind your back and then try to raise your arms up like backwards. Okay. And I can't even raise them like 45 degrees. How far are you supposed to get them? You should at least be able to get them to like parallel to the ground. Anna can put her arms behind her back and then raise them to over her head. So, yeah, okay, yeah. See, yours is pretty good. You can actually go to 90. Uh, I can't do that. <laughs> Mine goes to like maybe 45 degrees if I'm on a good day. Hmm. So I have some mobility issues that I need to work on. Fair. And I mean, I can't even touch my toes right now for more than like a second. So there's definitely some flexibility things. So what I did uh, is number one, a few years ago, I took a yoga class. So I know some yoga moves and uh, for people who want to get into yoga for increasing balance and flexibility, I would recommend the yoga with Adrian channel on YouTube. Again, you don't want to go to a gym. So I'm guessing you don't want to go to a class. Yeah. So there, are, there's a, actually a lot of very good yoga channels on YouTube, but that's the one that I know about. And uh, they specifically have like a 30 days of yoga challenge playlist. Oh, I nice. think they may actually make a new one every year for like January to get them views. Uh, but it's also just a very good introduction to doing yoga. And then I went over to Reddit to look up like reviews of the gymnastic bodies co um, courses because they're kind of expensive. And I think they could probably be good, but the bodyweight fitness Reddit, which we'll link to in the show notes, actually has several well-built and constructed routines that you can access in their wiki for free. So I've just been looking through those, kind of getting familiarized with the stretches and warm-up exercises, and I'm gonna start going through their, uh, their move routine. Okay. Like this week, actually. It's gonna be my new thing. So I'm still training rock climbing, still doing skating and all that kind of good stuff. But I wanna add this in here because I want to build a more versatile uh, mobility and flexibility in like all of my body. And I think it's also gonna be important for Ninja Warrior. That does sound like it requires mobility and yes. such. Um, oh yeah, another thing that I couldn't do, I think like six months ago, I could not sit cross-legged and stand up from that position without using my hands or without like weirdly pivoting my legs around to get to a kneeling position first. Oh. Like I couldn't just stand up from my my feet's current contact yep. points to the ground. I guess you're, you're missing a lot of flexibility points. I can do that like. now though. Oh, you can and now? Yes. Okay. Because I remember last time I went to go visit my grandma, I couldn't do it and they were laughing at me. So I came in uh, this weekend because I was in yeah, Iowa. So you spent your every waking hour <laughs> trying to prove grandma wrong. Yeah, that's exactly what I did. And now I can do it. Um, and he actually mentioned that exercise on the Tim Ferriss episode. He was talking about how, and this may be good for people who do actually go to the gym, how a lot of people will go 
and do most of their training in the gym and just do like your, your very conventional exercises, your squats and your deadlifts and all that kind of stuff. And then they go play softball and they try to like slide into a base around a corner and they blow a knee. It's because they've built no flexibility and no strength for when that knee kind of goes out of alignment. So he mentioned just the the simple exercise of standing up from a cross-legged position as an mm. exercise that he actually has his gymnasts do to build that more resilient um, muscle in the knees so they're more able to deal with, with stresses in all different directions instead of just weight on the bar up and down. Yeah, that seems, that seems like something I wouldn't think about. Yeah, and I wouldn't think about it either. Like, it becomes very easy to get into, like, a routine that leaves you with a lot of imbalances mm. and a lot of, um, like, poor capabilities across a wide range of different types of movements. Yeah. Like, how many guys out there are good at lifting a bar, you know, above their chest? And that's a, like, that's it. Well, this makes me feel good about my floor cushions rather than having mm. a couch because it means that I am getting up and then down all the time. I, I like yeah. you know, I'm not like starting halfway standing already on a chair. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, it is probably a lot healthier that you have those instead of a couch, hmm. to be honest. Like, I don't know. I, I don't think I'm going to go get rid I of my couch. I mostly did it for like my back, but I didn't consider like leg flexibility or mm. exercise potential. Yeah, it probably does. Yeah, it seems reasonable. Um, and it makes me think like people in, in different countries who sleep on floor beds their whole lives. They probably retain oh. better mobility throughout their entire life. I also than... sleep on a floor bed. Look oh, at me. There you go. Yeah, because like those people, even into their old age, have to get down onto the floor and then back up every yeah. single day. Yeah, you never get a chance to like baby your joints until they stop working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, it, it's kind of sad that like a lot of people in, in our culture never really have to do those movements. So then they lose the ability to do them and they become fragile. Hmm. So, and that, that's, I can't, like, that's the biggest thing for me. I have all these athletic goals, but I want to be anti-fragile, essentially. I want to be resilient to all different kinds of stresses. Uh, so the other thing on the body weight fitness thing that I actually came across this morning is a, is a dead hang challenge. What is, is, so are you just hanging? Is, is that, that's all is that is. a dead hang? Yeah. So the context for this is, I, again, I want to do Ninja Warrior and I'm going to need ridiculous grip strength, but more okay. importantly, grip endurance. Okay. Like I need the ability to just hang from my hands for a really long period of time because a lot of those obstacles are just hanging obstacles. And I've developed a lot from rock climbing just recently, but uh, I was looking for some other ways to, to build it even further. And I came across this website. I can't remember the website's name. We'll have it in the show notes, but uh, he just has like a simple challenge to spend seven minutes hanging every day for 30 days. In a row? Does it have to be? Like, well, no, I can't hang. In a row? Minutes. That sounds like a long time I to cannot me. hang for seven minutes. Okay. I can hang for about a minute and 10 seconds from both Just arms. throughout the day, get to seven. But yes, get to seven. So it's, it's like the, the PMP principle, which okay. is a workout described on Nerd Fitness where you, you know, if you want to get better at pull-ups, Day one, you do 10 pull-ups in as many sets as possible, or as few sets as possible, but it's okay if it's multiple sets. And then day two, 11, and you add one every single day. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if it takes you 60 sets to do 60 pull-ups. The fact is that you accomplish 60 pull-ups on day 60 or whatever it is. So this is just accomplish seven minutes of hanging. Okay. Uh, and I've done three today. So okay. I have is four that, more. Is that difficult? It is difficult, yeah. <laughs> I've never, I'd never even thought about that as a thing. I yeah. have no idea what that, how strong you got to be to do that. I can't think about it. Well, there was an interesting article on T Nation about uh, about developing like grip strength, and the author was talking about how you can develop it through just doing single arm hangs, and he had mentioned that if you can hang from one arm for sixty seconds, like you're pretty strong, and that, that's like a very good goal to shoot short for. Shoot one for. arm, sixty seconds. I can do ten seconds on one arm. I've and got it, one functioning arm right one now, so I know what try. I'm going to try later. Yes, you could try it with one arm. Uh, and he did mention that if you, can, if you can't do it for more than 10, then you should probably go down to assisted one-arm hangs or two-arm hangs, things like that. Okay. So I'm like right at the cusp of maybe I shouldn't even be training one-arm hangs too hard right now. And, and with this one, I do want to mention like if you're hanging, if you're putting a lot of stresses on your arms, uh, don't work through pain. And I, actually, this is a universal warning. Don't work through acute pain because that means you're probably straining something you shouldn't be straining. Yeah, you, you shouldn't tear things too far because then they yeah. don't rebuild like you want. 
Yeah. Um, Coach Summer was talking about this in the podcast. He was he was saying there's a difference between fatigue and injury. Fatigue, you know, the maximal level of pain you experience is while you're doing the movement. And then you stop and it starts to dull and go away. Okay, that's fatigue. That's fine. It's good. But if you stop doing the movement and it starts getting worse or stays the same, then it's probably an injury. And you want to avoid that, of course, through using good form and through using a, you know, a logical and gradual progression and not jumping into things that you're not ready for, but also by not training through pain. So if you have pain, don't, don't just like try to grit your teeth through it. Oh no. If you do that, when you do like the wrong form or something, and you're trying to do some deadlifts, you're going to destroy your body. If you're just like, that hurts, let's ignore it. Yeah. I really liked the analogy he made in the in the show, or maybe it's not an analogy, but he, he just mentioned like a lot of people think they can go and train super intensely in the gym for one day and like that's needed. But n- like no matter how hard you go on one day, if you destroy yourself and you're unable to go into the gym for the other six days, like it's a net loss. If you go to the gym four times and go moderately, that's better than one time where you're just going intensely and then you injure yourself. So you know, be smart here. Uh, so that's, that's some stuff about bodyweight fitness and I will report on my progress on the podcast in later episodes. We'll do some little newsy things or Instagram. So now I want to talk about how to build your own little home gym. Uh, and I know that you have some stuff too. I so do have some stuff. What is as it much you, as you, what is yeah. it that you have? Cause I do have a few things. Okay. So I have some leftover dumbbells okay. back from physical therapy. Those were pretty helpful. How heavy are those? They didn't go very high at the okay. time. I think maybe 25 is my highest. Oh, that's bigger than what I have. Oh, okay. Well, I also had like a two pound one. So I'm remembering the <laughs> lighter ones where I yeah. had, I could barely move my wrist. But the main thing that I use at this point would be just my pull-up bar. Mm-hmm. And I, I found one at Target that looks pretty much like yours, but it wasn't out when you got yours. Like months later, suddenly they had one. Oh, okay. So Wait, does yours actually fit your doorframe now? Yeah, it's, mm. it's like it's longer and it's got all the weird extra curves and positionings. Looks like Target but, got smart. Yeah. Which is good because I needed that. The The pull-up bar is my favorite thing. Pull-ups are my favorite exercise. Um, my only regret is that in college, I felt I felt secure enough on my pull-up bar to do hanging sit-ups. And now oh, yeah. I am an adult and I see that that was a terrible idea. <laughs> I'd love to get something that would let me do hanging sit-ups safely. Yeah. But I don't have that yet. But when, I know I could get something that does it. I when just, I get my house, I'm going to install like a legit calisthenics yeah. bar yeah, setup. I don't, don't want to totally fall on my from. neck. But yeah, uh, I would never hang upside down from my pull-up bar on the door frame because it is in the door frame. And like, it probably wouldn't fall, but... Oh yeah, probably. I've already fallen from a pretty bad height doing something stupid like that on a pull-up bar. So... Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for the most part, I do... I just have my pull-up bar. And then actually I use um, the two bigger dumbbells to sort of, I grip them when doing push-ups. That way I'm not uh, ah. bending my wrist 90 degrees. Okay. It's more comfortable. Does it to hurt like, your hands if you do that? It can, or at least it did back when I was recovering from stuff. Okay. And it's it's just more comfortable to keep my wrist straight. Yeah. Uh, Anna's the same way, where if she has her hands at that bent angle, it hurts. So yeah, I and was like, hey, use the dumbbells. So what I have, I also have dumbbells. I have just a pair of 15 pounders. And the reason that I don't go higher is I don't really want to drop the money on one of those adjustable sets. And for me, it's like, I'll just do more reps. Fair. Because I'm not here in the house using the dumbbells to get like a full workout in. It's more like I want to take a break from work. So I'm going to go do some curls or some, you know, overhead lifts or some lat raises, things like that. Sometimes I'll also do weighted pull-ups just by like pinching the dumbbell between my feet. Oh. And that adds 15 pounds. Though I read an article today that was basically like, don't even really try to move to weighted pull-ups until you do a different variation of pull-ups, which is where you you go up and you do like the full pull-up and you pause for two seconds. And then you lower down till your elbows are at 90 degrees and you pause there for two seconds. And then you go down and hang and pause for two seconds. So it's just like this very, very controlled stilted pull-up motion and he's like if you can do two uh, ten of those then start doing the weighted ones but if not like just do those you don't got to worry about weights because a lot of people when they start doing weighted pull-ups they start kipping 
and they start using really bad form. What is that word? Kipping is like when you From kick like your legs out Napoleon to try to like Dynamite. force yourself up and you're not oh, okay. really using the muscles and developing them. You're just sort of like you're, you're generating like some weird cheating momentum. and using momentum. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, a lot of places do that for muscle ups as well. They do like a weird swinging muscle up instead of developing the strength and the flexibility to just pull straight up. So I think the one muscle up that I've done, which there's an Instagram video for, I did that. Oh no. I don't have the strength to actually do a correct one yet. So I'll get there though. So I've got my pull up bar and we can link to the actual model in the show notes because uh, mine, and I think the one you have now has a wide grip, but also a close grip for chin ups and then two different options for parallel grip, uh, grip pull ups. Yeah. And something interesting that was mentioned in that interview I was listening to, um, Coach Summer was talking about how parallel grip pull-ups can actually help to develop um, some sort of that flexibility for the shoulder extensions. Hmm. I'll have to go back and listen to the exact wording to remember what it was all about, but I had always kind of figured that the parallel grip grip pull-ups are useless because I can just do wide grip or I can do chin-ups. Like, why do parallel grip ones? They're just in the middle but apparently those can develop uh, muscles that the other two won't. So now I've just been doing a lot of different variations. Okay. I'll do wide grip, I'll do chin-ups, I'll do parallels. I will do uh, one arm assisted pull-ups where I'll use one arm and then grip my forearm with the other arm. Oh yeah. Because I do want to eventually work up to doing one arm pull-ups, but I'm not there yet. So that's kind of how I do it. And the progression there is just, um, if you get like really good at gripping your wrist and doing a bunch of pull-ups, then just grip your forearm and just like start moving down because your forearm gets bigger and bigger. So eventually there's like less leverage for the assisting hand and less uh, assistance from that side of the body. Okay. And then eventually you should be able to do a one-arm pull-up. Uh, I also, and I think this is actually a really good investment. I got some gymnastic rings. Yeah, what have you been doing with those? So these are from Amazon, like 30 bucks. The real cheap ones. I, I don't think anyone needs to go out and get like the, the Rogue Fitness ones for $75 because I think these are just the same thing. I hooked them up to my pull-up bar and I have been doing ring dips because like there's no, like the average apartment has nowhere to do dips. You need like a dip station. You need like a parallel bar. Oh, I see. Right? I, I, I remember what that looks like now. Yeah, but it's if you exciting. just suspend a couple of gymnastic rings from your pull-up bar, you've opened up a ton of new possibilities. Um, the biggest one for me is the ring dips, but I can also set the rings at a specific height and then I can kind of lay down on my back, grab the rings and then pull myself up and do like, like think of a reverse bench press motion. Yeah. I think they're called like inverted rows or something. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. I think that's right. Those are a great exercise. Uh, you can do push ups with them. If you lower them like almost down to the ground, um, you can lower them almost to the ground and then go up and up and up and put your feet in them to do decline pull, uh, push-ups. So are these easily adjustable? Yeah. There's just a little clasp and you just kind of, you press a little tab in and then you just pull the strap oh, to cool. exactly the okay. height you want. It's really easy. So that I think is a really good investment. And with that, I can do pull-ups. I can do dips. I can do those rows. I can do like basically an entire upper body workout with that plus some body weight motions. And what is this like 50 bucks? worth of stuff compared yeah. to buying like one of those giant gym things one of the with all the weights on the back yeah those tend to turn into clothing racks as far they as do. i've ever known and ra- they take up a ton than, of space yeah you could just get a gym membership and then you get mm-hmm. access to more machines but this is literally a doorway this is this is just a doorway so basically no space because i put the rings up on the pull-up bar when i'm not using them yeah you just so like they're just out of the have way. a door that you're cool with having open bam mm-hmm. there's your gym uh what else do i have Ooh, this is a fun one So I took a parkour class about eight months ago and all over this place, they have these, these balance bars. And I talked about this in my previous episode of the podcast. So apologies for repeating myself, but they were basically just like pipe from the hardware store drilled into some two by fours and they're maybe four or five inches off the ground. And we use them for practicing just like balance work. So I just went to the Home Depot and I bought a pipe and a couple of 90 degree angle connectors, a couple of uh, what are called nipples, which are just like very small sections of threaded pipe, floor flanges, and then two scraps of two by four, screwed it all together, and I've got myself a little three foot long balance bar. So we've just been 
working on standing on it, both uh, with feet kind of like in line with the bar and also with feet perpendicular to the bar and then working on turning around on the bar, which is pretty difficult. And it's just, it's good for balance work. Uh, you could also use that as a push-up bar, though I find dumbbells to be better because you can angle them oh, yeah. to a more natural wrist position, but you could use it for that. This week's episode of our show is brought to you by our friends over at Audible, the world's best place to get your hands on audiobooks. And I, as you probably know, am a huge fan of audiobooks because they allow me to learn new things and listen to all the books that I do not have time to sit down and read with my eyes while I am cooking dinner or while I am biking to work or doing all sorts of other mundane things that do not require a ton of my attention. Uh, Audible's library has an unmatched selection of audiobook titles and basically every genre that you can think of, like think of some genres, science fiction, they got them. Fantasy? Fan they got them. Whoa. Probably even cookbooks. Ca Captain Underpants? I don't know if they're... <laughs> I think... Do I don't those, know if they do have, those have audiobooks? That's that a comic book. That doesn't seem necessary. Actually, I would not be surprised if they have Captain Underpants. <laughs> and they also have lots of really obscure stuff. Like, my girlfriend actually listened to, like, a, a Persian history audiobook at one point. So, whatever's on your to-be-read list, if you're one of those booktubing, TBR kind of people, they probably have it at Audible. Also, something new that we haven't gotten to talk about before, but it's pretty cool. And I just noticed popped into my app the other day, there is now a section called Audible Originals. So in addition to the one credit you get every single month as a member that lets you get any audiobook that you want, you also get two Audible Originals every single month, which are additional audiobooks that you cannot get anywhere else. So if you do happen to finish that one audiobook you picked, you have some more stuff to sink your teeth into, which is pretty cool. Now, we always like to recommend books on this podcast, but instead of me just recommending one myself, I want to have us both recommend something to give you some choice. So... What would you recommend for people well, uh, wanting a book to listen to? So I use Audible for some different. I've been working my way through the first Harry Potter in French, but oh, arguably okay. you could listen to it in English. So you got the French version? Yeah. Did you also get the Spanish version Spanish too? version of uh, Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. That's right. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, I guess you could yeah, actually use it for foreign language. That's what I've been using Audible for. Practice. That's pretty cool. So I'm going to recommend a book called uh, Stealing Fire by Stephen Kotler and Jamie Wheel. You know, I actually didn't even look at the authors until just now of this book. It the was more just, you know. It was a really interesting book to me when I picked it up off the shelf. So this book is basically about um, what they call non-ordinary experiences. These different states of consciousness and states of mind that people attain through neurofeedback or meditation or all different kinds of practices. And it's just kind of like a really in-depth expose into how technology and pharmacology and uh, neurobiology and even psychology are developing in order to help people achieve these states more effectively and, and use those states to get more work done or become permanently more happy people or to get over PTSD, things like that. And something that was very interesting to me, which I'm only about halfway through the book right now, um, they talked about how like Buddhist monks spend... 30,000 hours learning how to meditate. And uh, when they hook them up to like EEG machines, they can see that they can actually at will go into a meditative state that that puts them, uh, that puts like their brain waves into a different pattern than our normal patterns. But normal people cannot do this. And they were saying, well, the, the applications are pretty limited here because they took 30,000 hours yeah. to do this. But by using neurofeedback, basically by guiding people through meditation with helpful cues, um, using these the data they gain from this, you can actually train people to reach these states in far less time. So I'm not sure how much practical information I'm going to get from this yet. And there's a lot left to read, so that remains to be seen. But it is very interesting, and it's given me a lot of stuff to go and research and learn more about. Yeah, I might have to check that out. Yeah. So Stealing Fire is my recommendation for the week, and we may actually talk about this book on the podcast at some point in the future as well. So if you want to get a free 30-day trial of Audible service and a free audiobook download of your choosing, whether it's Stealing Fire or Harry Potter in French or anything else that you want, you can go over to audible.com slash CIG or text CIG to 500 500 on your phone. Once again, that is audible.com slash CIG, and I'll spell it out for you here quick. A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot com slash CIG or text CIG to 500, 500 
on your phone to get that free trial started, get your free audiobook, and let them know that you came from this show. Big thanks to Audible for sponsoring this week's episode of our show, and a huge thanks also goes out to Brilliant, who is also a sponsor this week. Brilliant, as you might know if you've listened to the show for quite a while, is an excellent platform for learning math, science, and computer science, and along the way, becoming a universally better problem solver, which is gonna help you immensely in your future career. Instead of having you sit through passive lecture style classes, Brilliant throws you immediately into tough, challenging problems across all of their courses. So you're forced to be creative, to really dig in and to find the solutions in a way that helps you effectively learn the material, whether it's in math or science or computer science, but also again, makes you a better problem solver. And when you go into the library of courses, you're gonna find a ton of different selections ranging from calculus to math for quantitative finance to computer science algorithms. But I do wanna highlight a couple of courses in particular this week, including their astronomy astronomy course and their classical mechanics course. If you want to learn more about how the universe works and you want to learn more about classical mechanics and, you know, physics, then you should take these courses because they are an excellent introduction to both topics. So if you want to start learning for free today, you can go over to brilliant.org slash college info geek. And if you're one of the first 83 people to do so, you're going to get 20% off of their annual premium subscription. Once again, I want to give a big thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this episode and being a huge supporter of College Info Geek in general. And let's get back into it. What else here? I have an Indo board. This is probably like the least needed, like the least recommended item on the list because it is like 150 bucks. But they had this at um, a co-working space we used to go to in college and I wanted one ever since. It's basically just like a board and then a circular barrel shaped thing that you put it on top of and then you just like, you balance on it as the, the thing rolls back and forth. And again, it's really good for balance work and I find it fun. And I also have a, uh, a cushion. So instead of like the hard plastic rolling drum thing, it's just like a cushion that makes it kind of wobbly in all directions, but less extreme. Okay. And I sometimes use that while standing at my desk as like a dynamic standing workstation. Um, I've got two 15 pound dumbbells and then uh, some grip trainers. Oh, and, the, the squeezy things. Yeah, so the ones I have are the Captains of Crush grip trainers. I have the, the trainer one at 100 pounds, the number one at 140, and I just got the number two, or no, number 1.5 at 167 pounds, which I am able to close. Oh, cool. Also, there's, so I was watching a YouTube video today about like, grip athletes and there's like a very specific technique they use to get these things into their hands at like the exact right leverage points and i tried it out and i was like hey actually can close that pretty easily oh so there's weirdly a lot of technique to it uh and what's there's like one other item coming in the mail today so the grip trainers only train your ability to close your hands oh yeah but i don't want to develop an imbalance because when you have a muscle imbalance, like the overdeveloped muscle, number one, it can cause tightness and it can cause a prone, you know, it can make you prone to injury, but also that overdeveloped muscle will never hit its potential if the counter muscle is underdeveloped. Uh, so in the case of the forearms for grip, it's the extensors where you're opening your hands that don't really get a whole lot of training. So I found these like little rubber discs with holes in them and you just like put your fingers in them and then you open them. Yeah. And they have, uh, and I actually wonder if they had you use those in physical therapy. Yeah, I've used point. those. I've used those before. It's important because, yeah. yeah, you definitely, we tend to train like one exercise and we say that's our arms. Yeah. But like each muscle, for the most part, our muscles have opposites that should be trained also. Otherwise, yes. I don't want the bottom of my arm yanking on the top. Yeah. And I think this is to like oversimplify an overall tip I would try to give to people at whatever level of fitness they're pursuing, um, vary things up because it can be easy, especially if you're in weight training, it can be easy to get into a routine that just goes forever and then you overdevelop certain muscles and you never develop their counterparts. And I mean, the biggest one is, is guys who bench a lot. They never develop the back muscles. So they just like, they just get really, really tight and their shoulders are pulled forward. And then they, there's a yeah. lot they can't do. Like, I thought that this was cool when I was a kid and I realized it isn't now. Um, my dad, who was like a record holding bench press athlete, couldn't uh, couldn't touch his elbows together. Oh yeah? Yeah. And I was like, oh, it's just cause your chest is so big, but I think it's like also a flexibility issue. <laughs> 
So yeah, I think I think possible. he would have been able to develop the ability to touch the elbows together, even if his chest was big, by just working on flexibility. Well, that's what happens when we train for like the vague idea of of like just strength. Like I want the biggest number yeah. rather than I want to be an overall fit. That's like, the thing. Body. Yeah, I want to be a versatile, fit, capable athlete that is able to basically tackle anything. And I think this is why Ninja Warrior appeals to me because it's like. You basically need to be able to do everything to do that. Yeah, yeah. It's not about hitting a certain number of something. You just yeah. need to be ready for everything that comes at you. Yep. Parkour, balance, grip work, upper body strength, running up a wall, all of it. You got you to gotta be ready for it all. And I just, I love that idea. Uh, so the last thing I want to talk about here is I basically want to implore people to go out and try sports because this is something that I really didn't do a whole lot of when I was younger. I thought, I don't like sports. I tried football in high school and didn't like it. I'm not a sports guy. Therefore, the only way for me to stay fit is to go to the gym begrudgingly, lift weights, go on the treadmill, and then go home and check it off on a habit tracker. But after trying some things, I have found some stuff that I just, I can't wait to do it. Like, I like podcasting with you, Martin, but I really wish I was rock climbing right now. Next and time I'm gonna we'll, go we'll do, do that. both at the same time. Rock climbing next podcast. Time. We could do that. Yeah, we could get the lav mics. Yeah. And speaking of rock climbing, so Anna, my girlfriend, is also the kind of person who hates going to the gym. And she is less athletically interested than I am, I guess. She's like less interested in sports than I am. So most of the things we've tried in the past have been things where she's like, eh, I don't really want to go do this. Meaning that, in the past, she was the kind of person who would have to force herself to go exercise. And I think a lot of people are in this situation where they're like, exercise is something that I hate doing. I'm only doing it because doctors tell me I gotta do it or because I know it's healthy. But she tried rock climbing with me and she is in love with it. And like, she asked me, she's like, are we gonna go rock climbing today? Which is, it's super awesome to hear that. Like I'm yeah, super happy when she's that's asking such a better me, way to do it. let's go be active. So, if anybody listening to this doesn't have something physical that they really want to go do, like go try other things. And I made a list of like all the sports that I have experienced in here, just maybe to, to pick the interest of some people listening who haven't tried these things. So I've done basketball, which is actually a lot of fun to just go shoot hoops, like casually, not play, but just like shoot hoops, uh, mountain biking, probably the most fun sport I've ever done. I, yeah, I can see why maybe you would have. So you know, it's not at the top of my list, not top of my opinion. boat right now. <laughs> um, hopefully don't fall and, and break a finger on that one. Rock climbing, um, figure skating, and for figure skating or hockey, which I haven't done, but the starting point is the same for both. Go take a learn to skate class. A lot of ice, ice, or ice rinks are going to have those, and you could go either way, but you may find it fun. Um, road biking, probably a little less likely to flip over. I and like that. Get hurt. Uh, and if anyone is interested in that one, there's a really cool app called Strava, which can track your mileage. And I find it really addictive and fun. And I will have a link to my Strava profile in the show notes. If people want to follow me and start using it themselves. Um, I've done wrestling, judo and jujitsu. Cause my dad forced me to do all of them. And boxing. I forgot to write boxing here. I've done all those ones. I want to be honest. I didn't really like most of those. I think wrestling with friends in the backyard when I was a kid was fun, but like the sport versions, eh, he just kind of forced me to do them. So there's going to be sports out there. People don't like it. I think like the combat sports and martial arts are not really that appealing to me. I'm not bad at them. I just didn't like them. Same for football. Wasn't a huge fan of football, but I did it. Uh, Parkour though is super fun. And I'm noticing that parkour gyms are opening in a lot of cities and Ninja Warrior gyms are opening. Denver has two Ninja Warrior gyms now. That's ridiculous to yeah. me. Yeah. And I gotta but go. But also really cool. I gotta go to one. Hopefully this weekend actually. Um, trampoline parks, maybe another sore spot for you. <laughs> but they are fun. I have the worst luck. Yeah. Well, they were fun before you sprained your ankle at the trampoline That's park. That's true. That's true. Um, and that one's not really a sport. So I just wanted to put it on there as like, hey, look, this is a thing that's active, but, you know, it's it's probably not going to show up if you look at, like, sports that I could try. 
but it's still a thing that you could go do regularly. That's really fun. And they have dodgeball leagues. Uh, skateboarding and inline rollerblading. I do like rollerblading. Rollerblading's dope. And I think it's making a comeback. Good. Yeah. Because I could rollerblade for hours and hours and hours, but I hate running. Yeah, roll- so running's like, awful. It's no contest. Running's do, the do worst Do the one that I find sport. fun. And I'm sorry to people who run in the audience, but it's for me, it's the worst sport. Actually, no, I take it back. I would rather run than swim. Oh, I can't swim. That's not an option for me. You can't swim. I really dislike swimming, especially in like an Olympic pool, like lap swimming. It is the most boring thing I can think of. I would rather jog. But uh, a treadmill is pretty bad too. Oh, yeah. If I was going to run, I would do it outside. I don't like treadmills at all. Yeah. Jogging on the treadmill and swimming laps in a pool are probably like the least fun exercise things I could think of. And I forced myself to do a lot of both in college because I wanted to be fit, quote unquote. So I like, how do you get cardio? I guess I go swim laps and run on the treadmill. No, you bike and maybe swim in a lake or do parkour. Um, I have yoga here. Yoga was fun. I would say yoga is like, it's a medium for me. It's all right. I probably not like ecstatic to go do it, but it does serve a very useful purpose in that it makes me flexible for other sports. That's fair. So I'm willing to do that. So yeah, I just kind of wanted to list those things out. Um, there are a lot of other sports out there, of course, like curling. Yeah, it's really just about finding like, what is there? Somebody on the internet once said something about getting three hobbies, right? Like one that oh, yeah. one that keeps you healthy. So that would be this, anything yep. that's physical that you enjoy doing. So you accidentally exercise then one that makes money, and then one that I forget the makes other you, one. Uh, s- smart, cool. I don't remember. Do you have your three hobbies? I don't remember what the third qualifier is, so I can't. <laughs> I can't figure that out. What if it's one that makes you more artistic? Oh well. Oh, maybe maybe it's that. It actually might be being creative. It could be. In or which it could case, be, it could have been like skill based or something like that. Something yeah. that like teaches you a skill. Oh well, then there we got photography. Boom. Probably rollerblading. Boom. And then. Uh, well, I can't really nail down one hobby that describes this job, but it's it's a collection of Doing things that is cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think like you're or we're in a weird position where like it's entrepreneurial. Yeah. So. Otherwise I like I had coding as a hobby far before I got paid for it. Yeah. So that would probably qualify. That's true. Uh for me, I guess rock climbing is probably the primary physical hobby right now, though I have many. And then skill wise, probably music at the moment. That's fair. Like playing guitar, taking vocal lessons. Um, I'm getting back into cooking too. Yeah. I've been a lot better at saying like, work is done at five. Now I'm going to cook. It's so weird how hard of a thing that is. It is. It's, it's so easy to be like, oh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to push till eight and oh, now there's no time. I want to have some time to well, chill. It's like, it feels like you're earning out. free time for the future, but you're never going to give yourself that free time anyway. Yeah. So like. Yeah. I just take on more. Yeah. I never actually get the free time that I'm trying to earn. Uh, what was the other one? For money? Oh, I guess. Yeah. I guess. Like, <laughs> uh, making stuff. Though maybe I could get good enough at music to sell music someday. I don't know. Maybe. That's not a huge priority for me. I would like, I would like to have people listen to the music I make eventually, but I don't know if I care that it ever makes money or gets big. Yeah. I just want it to be cool and I want people to enjoy it. Anywho, so takeaways from this episode. Number one, easiest thing to do, look into either some like bodyweight fitness routines. We'll link to the bodyweight fitness subreddit that has some very good recommended routines you could look into uh, or yoga, like yoga with Adrian. Anything like that is like, you can literally do it in your dorm room or in the bathroom or whatever. Like no excuses. Well, maybe there are, maybe there's an excuse like, I don't know. You've been turned to gold or something like that. I don't know. Well, I'm probably not going to do <laughs> push-ups excuse. in the bathroom, you know. Maybe not. But there are a few excuses to doing bodyweight fitness stuff like that. Um, we talked about some home gym stuff that you can use to start building like a versatile, non-space-taking, and cheap home gym. Um, I think like for me, the pull-up bar and the gymnastic rings would probably be my number one recommendations just because you can do so much with them in combination with like body weight things like push-ups and things like that and then uh go try sports 
Yeah. Go find something that makes you want to be active because I, I believe that we should all have something that makes us want to move. I know there's going to be people out there who are just like, I don't like to move and that should be fine. And like, I respect that opinion, but I feel like we were made to move or there's probably something fun. There are a lot of physical activities. Yeah. So my challenge to you is to go out and find something that makes you want to move on a regular basis. Uh, that is going to be it, I think. Yeah. Let's see if anything else to add. Um, it works. Don't think that this <laughs> is fake just because Tom also goes to gyms sometimes. Like, I only did body weight stuff in college, and I was doing 20 handstand push-ups. You That's do, true. You do actually get, like, as strong as you want to doing this stuff. Ooh, yeah, go It'll listen. It'll be quite a while before body weight's not good enough for you. Go listen to the, the gymnastic strength episode of the Tim Ferriss Show. It's, it's really cool. Yeah. And he was talking about how like his athletes, like their arms would get really big and ripped yeah. just from doing like, like rope climbs. Like it's not a too hangs. good to be true type thing. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't really, you don't have to have the gym. So this really will do what you want it to do if you hate gyms. I mean, honestly, a lot of, a lot of weighted exercises are just ways to do something that you probably can't do with body weight yet. Like I can't do one arm push ups, but I can do like I can bench with, you know, I can do dumbbell presses Yeah. and get a very similar, you know, isolated single side of the body pressing motion with like a 90 pound dumbbell, even though I can't do, I think I can do one, one arm push up. Well, it's like, I think arm. people were strong before we developed gyms. Yes. So basically you can find a natural movement that will do most of what you want. The muscles, mm. they, they work with natural activities. Also a very liberating uh, mind shift or mindset shift for me was going full in on wanting to be functional rather than wanting to be aesthetic. Okay. Cause in college I wanted to be big and I wanted to have a big chest and have six pack abs and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, yeah, I want to be athletic, but I also want to look really good. And now I'm like, I want to be functional period. And I just know I will look good if I go for that goal. Yeah, you care more about the capabilities. Like it's an ancillary benefit, but I'm not worried about it. So I'm not just like, I gotta do bench day because I gotta have like that lower pectoral definition. You know what I'm talking about, brah? I'm just gonna go do what I want. Yeah, that's probably long-term more sustainable anyway to just do stuff that you enjoy. Yeah, and if you enjoy bodybuilding, that's fine. But like, if you don't, don't, don't like feel you need to do it just because you think you need to look a certain way. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, we're going to have show notes for this episode over at CIGpodcast.com slash 231. This is episode 231. Or if you are listening to this on YouTube or Facebook, there's going to be a link in the description to check out the show notes. We'll have links to that Tim Ferriss episode, to Reddit, to all of the gear that we talked about, and maybe to some other things that are on this list. Uh, Thanks for watching. If you want to support this show, one great way to do it is to subscribe to us over on Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts and also give us a rating and review if that platform does have the ability to do so. I do know that Apple Podcasts definitely does. So huge thanks to you if you uh, go and do that. If you're watching on YouTube, you can, as always, put comments in the comment section if you have follow-up questions. You can also DM us on Instagram. I'm Tom Frankly, and you are Yo Martholomew. You have prettier pictures on your feed than I do. I try. So you should probably follow this guy. Just DM me. Don't follow me. <sighs> they have to follow me to DM me. <laughs> oh, it's a trap. I see. It's a trap. Yeah. And I think that's going to be about it. Um, yeah. So thank you guys so much for listening. And we will see you in next week's episode. Thank you. Thank you.